For project 44, splitting current, there are going to be three parts. The first part will measure the current flowing through the battery. We're going to have the meter set on the 50 milliamp setting and I'm going to hold down the press switch. Please turn down your volume because this may be loud. Here we go. The meter reads close to 35 milliamps. Now for part B, we will swap the locations of the meter and three snap wire. And now the meter will measure the current flowing through the horn. Here we go. Now the meter reads just over 10 milliamps. For part C, we will move the this three snap wire over by the horn so that the meter measures the current through the red LED. Now it reads just over 25 milliamps. So the current from the battery splits up between the horn and LED. If you add up the current you measured through the horn and LED, it should be equal to the current measured through the battery. So 25 milliamps for the LED, 10, mil and 10 milliamps through the horn will equal 35 milliamps in total flowing through the battery. So this is a nice way of knowing how the current in a full circuit is divided among its components. I replaced the horn with the motor and fan and I'm going to say what the meter will measure now. For part A, the meter measures between, I would say, about 33 milliamps for the battery, for the current running through the battery. And now for part B, I will swap the locations of the meter and one three snap wire near the fan and then now the fan won't be able to spin because the meter gets in the way but now the current flowing through the motor is just over 30 milliamps and then for part C for the red LED the meter records I would say about 20 2 milliamps. So if we add 22 milliamps and 30 milliamps, that would give us 52 milliamps. In that case, it doesn't seem like it equals the total current flowing through the battery. Although I'm not going to do it, you can use different combinations of these parts to measure the difference in current and how it is split. Project 46 involves replacing the rechargeable battery with the solar cell and we're going to use the horn and red LED and let's see what happens. I'm going to use this desk lamp and the LED comes on and the horn is very faint. The LED is very dim but you can see on the voltage meter, it reads nothing on the 50 milliamp setting. Whatever little current there is uh, flowing through the meter, it is not readable. However, on the 0 0.5 milliamp setting, it looks like I would say that 0.45 amps, milliamps of current is flowing through the meter now flowing through the circuit. Now for part B it now reads about 0.3 milliamps. Now for part C on the 0.5 milliamp setting it reads close to 0.45 milliamps. 
and there you have it for the solar cell in this splitting current circuit. For project 47, voltage order, we will have the meter set to the 5 volt setting, but realize that a resistor in the pivot stand changes the value to 10 volts. It doubles the value, so that means any readings that we get on the meter, we will multiply by 2. Now, for the first part of the circuit, we will connect the loose end of the red jumper wire to various labeled points on the circuit, A through F. Now, I am going to first connect the one end of the red jumper wire to the battery, point A, here. And so, the meter reads... 2 volts, so it would really be 4 volts passing through this part of the circuit. Now we will move the end of the jumper wire to point B over here so that the solar cell is included. And now with the uh, adequate light, it reads about the same, just over 2 volts, although it would really be just over 4 volts. Point C with the uh, slide switch included, just under two volts, so just under four volts, it will read. Point D, now the meter reads less than one volt, so it would probably be less, it would definitely be less than two volts. And for point E, we will insert the wire over. Now the motor and fan are included. There will probably be a similar result as the previous connection, maybe a little lower. And finally for point F, right here, the meter will read basically nothing. As you can see how much voltage is flowing through. There are a lot of devices that greatly limit the voltage through the circuit. Now for part two, we will take this end of the black jumper wire and then we can connect it and the loose end of the red one between any different points to see how the voltage is affected. Here we have, but note that the meter will only measure positive voltage, not negative voltage. So it looks like we have some negative voltage in this circuit. So I am not going to really demonstrate the entire second part, but hopefully you'll have an idea of what it is like. Now, sometimes you may need, like, to give the fan a spin to get it started. But you need a lot of light for that. Project 48, current order, features the components in a loop. And the current runs through them in a counterclockwise direction. I will move the circuit up to the light source. And both LEDs come on to a certain extent. And the voltage meter is set to the 50 milliamp setting. But on that setting, it does not really record anything. Now the fan does not spin. There's not enough power to spin it. But what you can do is you move the meter to the 0 0.5 milliamp setting and now you can see that it reads 0.4 milliamps. Now for part B of this project you can arrange any of the components on the grid as long as they are in the loop and that the components the directions in which the current 
is flowing are the same. And this is to teach that regardless of how you arrange the parts, as long as the current is still flowing through them in the same direction, the current level will be the same, at least 0.4 milliamps. And this is an example of how the pieces can be arranged. I didn't arrange them too many, too much, but I just thought, just decided to show you one example. The voltage meter will be set to the five volt setting, and we will hold down the press switch, and the slide switch will be set to position B. I am going to hold it up to this lamp and hold down the press switch. Now the voltage meter reads just over two volts, but with the uh, pivot stand, the one of the resistors in it will double the voltage, so it's really at least four volts, a little bit over, I would say. Now, if I was to move the slide switch to position C, only the voltage of the solar cell will be recorded. And you can see that it is higher, nearly two and a half volts, although that would probably be about five volts when doubled. Voltage produced will be lower when sort these sources run larger devices or pieces of equipment because the solar cell, in this case, can only produce a small amount of current.